Now, that's a little bit terrifying. You can't lie about Guys, that. In Control Nation are going to have again. their title card strategy flipped on them as Coastal Gaming. <laughs> well, they are loaded up and ready to go with this. Look at the Amar. Look at the Blitz. Look at these guys. Oh, man. Look Let's at this see boom. how this goes. In Control, they're good at those rushes, but can they live up to getting rushed themselves? Well, it's the it's the aggression, right? It's the move first meets the you know unstoppable object and speaking of things that are unstoppable a hundred percent of the votes right now are for coastal gaming if you guys are in chat start supporting your team here this is map number three of the first quarter finals of the genesis playoffs ladies and gentlemen we got a bunch of money on the line here make sure you're rooting on your teams give them your energy and here we go into the actual action phase of round number one you're gonna see unlimited setting up some razor wire here on these red stairs Dan's breaking out the Zofia. You can have the Finca as well. So LMG Bros as well as Beamed. So we're gonna see the uh, the rush come for a later day, but we instead are gonna see a whole ton of bullets that are gonna be flying at the faces of the members of In Control. Yeah, that's a that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, you have a couple of these. So when EJ just oh, comes no. outside and kill. Their their scam's gone. That's one of the LMGs out of there ej is right back to his old self his his conniving little little <laughs> jump out run out self and well i'm glad to see it that's what we were missing a little bit from ej didn't matter too much he's in control took control of last map and we're able to take it all the way here but look at gavin moving in very smoothly very swiftly hoping to be able to snag a couple of kills himself still two minute two minutes to go in this round and in control did net that early kill yeah moving able able to move in so swiftly because he had that drone going in front of him so that's what you call following up your drone if your drone gets shot you know exactly where the defender is and you can kind of just swing and take that fight and who better to swing and take a fight than somebody with extra health and an lmg you're gonna see some grenades coming in here raining in from the skylight to try to take care of well anything they can take care of case looks like it's down on the ground outside though and that could be a potential problem here we get to a minute 30. They are going to have to go and retrieve that unless they just want to play a game of team deathmatch. All members of In Control here kind of just hunkered down on site. Coastal going to have to try to break through this wall here and get into site and try to do some planting. Well, they're starting to get pretty close. You do have those Gene Candelas that can be a big issue to any site and any retinas you might hope to keep. And of course, with the Finca, those boosts have become such a meta these days. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You want her on your side. <laughs> and, and she's gone. There's Amp doing work again. Amp, of course, a unsung and then sung hero from In Control Nation. Don't count out Amp ever. And don't count out Candela spam. Here it goes. Plant is going to be attempted now by our dear friend. A nice shot from Brios covering that Nomad with the shots there. Jeez. Look at this go oh my goodness 3v2 now as shots are ringing out on all directions the plant has been thrown down engage beamed and brios hoping to make sure that it stays that way beamed is looking to do so as it's just tristan in the 1v3 yeah this is gonna be a tough situation here spear in hand though it's a very good gun will also be able to heal herself up though that's that is the thunderbird it's kind of stations are going to be placed strategically around the site here so Expect them to try to get some healing done, but instead gonna try to stick the plant. A little bit of a bait. He's gonna be able to take the head right off of Brioche. However, the last member is outside. Tristan though, gonna be going for that pick and engage. Oh. Gonna be able to finish it off. That was a wild ride. I mean, you had <laughs> in control killing everybody of Coastal, and then Coastal killed everybody of in control. And then it comes down to a 1v1 where both members are low health. Eventually. Coastal going to be able to take care of it. We do have a tactical timeout coming out rather early, though. So, oh, and scams left. So that's probably probably a wise call there. As scams will end up getting disconnected, but Coastal able to take that round out of the grasps of defeat. It was a three v five. We saw the Finca go down. We saw the Candelas coming out. Nomad was planting on the other site. Slay. Like, they had no idea and. And Kayed was right there behind the shield. Had no idea, no way to stop it. CSG takes the W after EJ hops out the window and gets the kill. So fantastic round coming out from them. And they are definitely, definitely showing us why they deserve this spot here and why they are the defending champions. However, we got a little bit of a change up here in our polls. 69% nice to CSG. So 
those those in control fans showing up and voting they are showing up they're coming they're ready to go man they're rooting them on and can you blame them in control has been a great great team and it's still what a nice shot for for uh for coastal to win that round it really was a crazy one i mean it kind of sums up what we've seen throughout the series so far it just a back and forth you never know who's going to come out on top and oh I, it's a good pace it's a good it's a good way to set off the first round of our final map of tonight i mean could you ask for a, a better beginning to the best of or to the final map in the best of three i don't i don't know if i could so really excited to see how this continues to go but coastal man they look good they've been able to win out a lot of those gunfights that i think especially on map number one which they they did win they were kind of losing a, a lot of those big peaks and a lot of those shots against especially ej they've been able to figure them out a little bit more of course ej still terrifying as we saw with that jump out but i think coastal have gotten a little bit of a better idea although saying that in control did just win map number two yeah i mean <clears throat> this I agree with you. This is exactly what we expect out of these two teams. These two teams have been just, it's like you ever see the nature videos of the two Rams just slamming their heads into each other. The, the big horn sheep. This is what we're watching, right? We're just watching two absolute Titans just go pound for pound, blow for blow. And it has been absolutely fantastic to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, by the way, this is the first quarterfinal of the playoffs. We still have, Many more games to go here through the playoffs, but I think this might be hard to top. We do have everybody back in, so we will be getting back into the action, continuing it here for you guys. We do not want to delay. We don't want anybody to lose momentum, but yeah, this is only the first quarter final of the playoffs, and whew, if this is if this is series number one, what are the rest of them going to be like, Slay? Well, I can't wait to find out. I'll be back again tomorrow with alien for the second matchup so all good Attack things hopefully for this but like you mentioned man this has been such an amazing amazing series that beating this would be a difficult task and i can't wait to see what teams are up to that but off the rip it's coastal taking that first round looking at the kills well spread brio's doing good bean doing good that's something I really appreciate about Brios, especially whenever I see the guy, I feel like he's always doing well. He's a very consistent player, a great fragger. The same with Beamed. These guys can go out there and do it again and again, and I would be remiss if I didn't put Kristen on the list of players who really, really have been staples and consistent fraggers. And that's the word, right? Consistent. You want to be as consistent as possible because any, you know, what's what's the old saying? A blind squirrel finds a nut, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. But you have to be consistent. And we've seen Brioche and we've seen Amp and we've seen EJ a little bit uh, of a problem, but Tristan definitely in the last game and Beam just be super, super consistent with their gameplay. Over the last two maps, obviously, Beam was in the last map number one, and that is continuing now to map number three. I don't think stamina is a question for any of these operators or any of these players. Gavin going to be sending some shots into EJ's direction, but he's not going to get any done. As Amp, though, will be taking out scams. That's Case actually dropped outside as well. It's just going to have to be some fast rotation. And look, EJ is right there to help his buddy out in case it is needed. Brioche, though, going to be going through this top area in a minute gone here. Again, they're going to have to go pick up that case. Otherwise, it's going to be a team deathmatch round very quickly. You know, I, I forgot Amp in that in that list as well. I don't know why I always overlook that lad Amp. Maybe it's because he's so high up on my screen. I can't see him all the way up there. But that dude really has done amazing things as well. There's no doubt about that. And, well, with the early advantage going to In Control Nation, we've still got just over half the round to go. Let's see if Coastal can get a couple of frags back and, and really get this round going. I mean, we've seen firefights between these two teams. We've seen kills come so fast you can barely keep up with them. How's that going to play out now? We've got half the round to go in Control Nation. Looking like they've got a good hold of things, but you've got a lot of uh, still big names and big gunners from Coastal to deal with. I'm worried about those Candelas as well. Those things always freak me out. Not only just that, we literally just watched In Control have two picks at the beginning and lose the round. And here we go. They got engaged on the trade here with EJ. So they got the first two picks of this round as well. And again, they were they lost the previous round here after getting the first two picks. And again, look who is on the board. Finca, it's beamed. It's Brioche. 
these three people are absolutely crazy for this team. Brioche was able to pick up the diffuser, and you can see he's going to be sending one of those Yana holograms through and trying to get a little bit of information as Gavin and Beam are going to be out here on this top landing area. Limited going to be playing in the bathroom and trying to watch for that Brioche Yana to be coming and hopping through the windows. 35 seconds, though, they're going to have to move quickly. Ooh. There's a nice nade from Gavin taking down Tristan. Back to that 3v3, back to even Stevens. Unlimited now getting aggressive with it. With under 30 seconds to go, he can start really putting the pressure onto that the offensive team. And Unlimited doing a good job of that. Amp still up. It's going to be a shot there. It's an explosion to take one down. Beam is able to find Nar. The 2v2 with 10 seconds to go. Amp finds some good shots. Beam somehow alive. Jumps over. Still a going though beamed takes down unlimited the 2v1 plant needs to go down and it will be attempted here by gavin he's got to get this done amp will try to rotate no c4 but he has a good move down to the 1v1 amp is potentially the biggest unsung hero but no coastal shut him down beam gets the kill amp tried to do it all had to switch to the sidearm but just doesn't have the pressure to put on to beamed as he shows exactly how it's done. Amp did literally everything in his power to win that mm. round for his team, and he almost did it. It's an unfortunate situation, depending on how you're looking. If you're an in-control fan, it's an incredibly unfortunate situation. But if you're a Coastal fan, you're like, phew, thank goodness, because that was almost very bad. Uh, the Nitro that came out there was able to blow Brio sky high. Fantastic coming out there but yeah it's it's a rough situation they're going to be going over to aviator games now and this site a lot like trophy is they play very similar right so if you're having problems defending trophy you might end up having problems defending this site as well now we saw the blitz initially coming out and uh, here we go here's the change this is what i was hoping to see Brio is going to be swapping to the Amaru and Gage is going to be on the fusion scams going to be bringing out the blitz and uh, <laughs> Gavin on the Finca. I think it's safe to say Choo Choo Pain Train is coming through. Coastal is really going to give us a show, man. I love these. You know, Cafe, one of my favorite rushes on Cafe is, of course, that pillar rush going straight on into reading. I think that's got to be my favorite rush of any just because it's just like right in there. It's such a classic rush right through the door into the site. But let's see what they can do here. They've got a lot of real aggressive operators. They do bring out, oh, man, that zero as well, hoping to get some advantage with his utility. But, man, let's see what scams can do on the blitz. We saw EJ do pretty well. Albeit the Blitz uh, ended up losing at the end of the night. He still did okay. Let's see how Scam stacks up. Yeah, it's going to be a real challenge here. We're going to see Engage playing on the Thatcher. And here comes the rush of Scam. <laughs> going to be pushing up through the shield. Nobody's playing on it, but Jaeger's playing on the stairs. He's going to blind the fellow German operators. They're going to go. They're both going to go down. Engage, though, going to be able to finish one off as Brioche gets the headshot on the AJ or EJ. Amp going to be taking out Beam. Some flashbangs coming in now. Brioche is going to be taking a ton of damage. He's going to finish it off, though. Amp with that shotgun. It's all going to come down to Amp on the mute. He has no nitro in hand. He's taking a bunch of damage. Shot from multiple angles. He's twisting and turning, trying to figure out where all this is coming from. Grenades, EMPs, everything wow. coming in at this poor man. Because he's just behind the bar trying to relax on Easter, on Easter weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Just a fantastic rush here coming out from Coastal, and they're going to go up 3-1. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Coastal just running through it. After these three rounds of play, they have just dominated so far. In control, they've got a lot of work to do. There's no doubt about it. It doesn't look that good so far, but something to be said is that Coastal oftentimes does really, really well in their first half. Uh, sometimes they fall off, sometimes they don't fall off. I mean, if we look at just this series, the first map, they didn't fall off. They won 7-5. The second map, they were up 4-2, and then they ended up losing 7-5. So Coastal can be a little bit unpredictable with what happens in the first half compared to the second half. However, a 3-0 start is nothing to complain about. They're doing phenomenal, phenomenal. They're doing phenomenal, and their gunplay has been on point. Yeah, I mean, like you said, they're playing absolutely out of their mind right now. 3-0. At worst, Slay, they've guaranteed a tie for this split. 
right? It's exactly where you want to be on a map like Villa. Villa is somewhat 50-50 at this point, a lot would argue. I'm sure there's probably a number that skews me one way or another, or somebody in the community will correct me at some point. But it feels like whenever you see these matches, there tends to be a lot of back and forth between the attackers, attackers and the defenders. And I'm going to see them going back over the trophy. They are not even wanting to attempt the kitchen site. And quite honestly, I really can't blame them because they can't hold the upstairs. The downstairs would be even harder. You're going to have Sledge and Buck ripping open a floor above you, uh, or the ceiling above you, excuse me, and it would just be absolutely a nightmare to try to take care of that. If you can't even win these top floor sites, things are not looking good. But again, it's all it all depends on uh, which side of the glass you're looking at. You know, If you're a Coastal fan, hey, your team's playing fantastic, and they're about to move on to the next round if they can keep this up. But if you're an in-control fan, you've got to be thinking someone needs to wake up, someone needs to do something for camp. Six kills, mm. and he's getting no help from NAR and Unlimited, both sitting there with Gusex. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of hyped up Tristan earlier on, putting him on the list of consistent players. Yeah, I still think he's a consistent player, but it's certainly not showing here, which I would say uh, defeats the purpose of being called uh, consistent. Tristan needs to step up his player. game. <laughs> that's he's true, a support that's player. True. You know, he's not, a, he's not an entry fragger. He's not a anything special i mean he's playing the, the thunderbird mm -hmm. here so i mean consistent can mean a bunch of different things if you're talking specifically kills i feel like that's a really bad metric to kind of hold on to people Real. but ej on the other hand though has to step it up Obama's he kind of slacked off a lot on clubhouse and he's only sitting here with two kills this team really needs him and if he might be getting an engagement even quicker than he anticipated this game, he's going to be swinging oh, through and take the head right off. L85 going to be putting in some work, but he's going to be immediately refragged. There he is. Amp, the absolutely heralded hero of this team, is he's going to be able to scamper right off. Amp, seven kills. I believe that's top all across the board. It is not only top of his own team, but top of the lobby. And Tristan will get one on the brioche as well. Good shot, Brios again. One of those great, great fraggers. Beam looking good as well. And now the advantage is in, in control nation's hands. Tristan coming out in Astro, hoping to get a couple of more picks. Do what he can. Time is starting to tick down. Just about half the round does remain. Hibana getting ready to open things up, making it a little bit more difficult for the defense to feel safe and, and feel calm about what's going on, what's unfolding around them. Still with the advantage in in control's favor not anymore is okay still more as tristan is able to pick up on gavin after engage takes down one of his teammates the 3v2 is gonna fall to a 3v1 tristan now on the triple kill and amp cleans it up to give in control their first round of map number three see all, all you have to do is you know call out tristan say he's under and bam the guy drops a 3k you know, and Easy. I also believe that's a I also believe that's a buddy ace between him and Amp there. So around desperately, desperately needed in control nation and they were able to get that one. But again, it's kind of what we were talking about. Tristan, he's playing the support operator. He's not always going to be the flashiest, but when when it is coming down to him having to clutch out these rounds, those are the types of plays that we've seen him making all night long across all three maps. So I definitely feel like he definitely has to be put into that conversation <clears throat> of most consistent, especially in this team. Mm. Finally, though, we're going to be going down to the kitchen site. Attackers that has to feel good for INC to be able can. to get a win and be like, okay, we got one. Let's breathe. Let's go downstairs and let's try to wrap up two more here. So, yeah, good round for INC. Definitely well needed. Without a doubt, I mean, that's another thing about INC. I feel like they're able to deal with this pressure and uh, kind of thwart the momentum of, a, of especially Coastal time and time again. They've been able to slow them down right when they need to, which got them the big win just last map on Clubhouse. They were in a pretty big hole. I mean, having lost four rounds in a row at one point, bringing that back for the win is, a, is an incredible feat that they've been able to do. So heading into this, it's going to be round number five. They'd love to win a couple more rounds, but we've seen them and we've seen Tristan break down things and get a little aggressive. We'll see if anybody falls to his tactics, but we've seen in control come back from difficult odds. There's no doubt about it. They are a phenomenal team, but Coastal up 3-1 right now. Just need to keep on this track and they could definitely keep on moving in the playoffs.
Yeah, and we are gonna see Tristan do a lot of damage to both Gavin and Engage. Finca though, able to boost themselves back up, but if you look at the health though, Finca just over half health, so it really, really took a lot of damage at Spear 308. We talk about Finca a lot, but we also talk about her LMG. That Spear 308 though, a weapon that is shared between the two operators, is very formidable. It's a little bit more slow firing, but man, it hits like a truck whenever it does, and minute gone here, and you can see Gavin boosting himself back up a little bit more. So that's going to be two of the Finca charges used up already. Definitely not a utility you want to be burning through this early in the round. Well, Bruce going to be doing a little bit of forward scouting, getting some information as much as he can. But we'll see if those used Finca charges do come back to bite him in the end of this round here. Still no frags on either side. Unlimited has fallen back to his old ways of struggling a little bit. It was him doing quite well last round or last map that helped in control get the win, especially with EJ falling off a little bit, especially on Clubhouse. So with just half the round to go, let's see if Amp can keep it up. Let's see if Amp and Tristan can continue to run this because if it isn't them getting kills, it's almost nobody. Zero from NAR, zero from Unlimited, two from EJ. Amp and Tristan are doing everything they can. Let's see if it's going to be enough with a minute and 10 to go. Scams gonna be taking a lot of damage from what one could assume was an explosive device. God six gonna be coming out here to take care of the banshee, and grenades also were being thrown out on the answer stairs, but nothing has really connected. I mean, you look at the health of both of these teams, and obviously, well, there goes scams. So health is really in the favor now of in control as they have an entire person above us. Brioche is also gonna get taken out as EJ finally doing some serious work here. Beam though gonna be taken out unlimited, to bring things back to a three v four. However, we are down to about 30 seconds left here. So Coastal going to have to pull something out in the last waning seconds of, the, of this round. Yep, 30 seconds is not a lot of time for the attackers to move in, especially when they're running low on the man count. They're jumping in to a four-man waiting death squad at this point. And a nice shot from EJ takes another. Engage is on the floor. It's all beamed pretty much left alone. With 13 seconds, he's got to just carry this. And, well, he'll be carried directly into the grave. That spear finds the kill. And in control, Nation start to step into the stride on map number three. They're just one round away from tying things up before the switch happens. And this is what we saw in Oregon, right? Now, granted, it was a little bit of a different storyline, but uh, INC, they were able to bring it back and tie it up in the first half. On Ultimately, though, they did go on to lose that map. That needs to be reminded, but <clears throat> they were able to bring their skills back onto Clubhouse and win 7-5. So, yeah, a fantastic round coming out there. Finally, EJ waking up a little bit, able to get a 3K for his team there and do a ton of damage. So, we we'll to see if we can keep that continued as we will be going back upstairs to ABG. This is a fan favorite site. This is probably going to end up playing the most when you're playing ranked with your stack and with your friends or with the randoms who you just have to be paired up with. But this is the site that, again, though, we saw Coastal Gaming be so dominant on this attack. I don't think we're going to see the rush strat again, though. I think that was kind of a one time thing. Um, it, they would be way too prepared for it if it happened again. Yeah, no, I totally agree. That's kind of the thing with rushes, huh? <laughs> After you do it once, it's, 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 people kind of get primed against it. They, they, they're ready. They, in the back of their minds, they are prepared and, and up for it. So it's always difficult to pull off a big, big rush twice in a row. In control, though, they are needing a big win here. They want to tie this up. And, well, I, I mean, we've seen kind of both sides of the story. Interestingly enough, when they didn't tie it up and they went down 4-2, that's when they ended up winning the map. And when Coastal went up or went 3-3 even, they took their map back on Oregon. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. You know, there's been a lot of similarities throughout every single map, just the way these two pl uh, teams play. So we'll see how that continues to go. 30 seconds now into the round. A little bit of... Shots being fired, not too much engagement at all, though, but control being taken little by little by Coastal. Defender exposed. Ooh, there's a big shot from Brios as well, able to take the opening kill of the round. EJ now dead. EJ was just starting to turn it up, too, but the refrag from Tristan takes down Scams. 
Yeah, an unfortunate situation there. Brioche getting the drop shot on EJ, who looked like he had it so wrapped up here. But Gavin now going to be hopping on the germ. We're going to see the case get dropped off as Brioche going to be sending his hologram through here. And just get it to end a little bit early. That will get the recharge back a little bit quicker instead of having to get shot. So smart play there. Unlimited sitting here playing the shield. you got to believe he's got an ADS there. You can see there in the doorway, looks like two of them to protect himself from any kind of grenades. So, ooh. Nitro from underneath, not going to be able to hit, and Gavin's still going to be at full health, but over halfway through this round here, and everything's kind of just stalled out. Well, yeah, pretty stalled, that, but <laughs> there's Tristan picking up a kill. Now, Tristan really has picked up the game an insane amount. He's now 8-3, and three, doing amazing. He's a great player and gives his team the man advantage. Gavin prepares to swing. He's uh, looking for a kill. Nar with the SMG is ready and waiting. Just a minute to go now as AVG only oh, might be a little bit of lag there. I'm not sure, but Gavin takes the kill onto Tristan and evens it back to a 3-3. Three -three. That LMG is deadly. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of a connection issue there. Unfortunately, Gavin gonna get smoked out, so he really can't move, but Look at this angle that Amp has set up here. If they do not know about it, it could be a problem. Brioche is in sight as well, just waiting for Gavin to be able to come in, and he's going to be planning in the default area. Smoke canister is going to be coming out, and it's not connecting, not doing any damage. The second one coming out, still not doing any damage. Finally, going to be able to do it as he's going to be able to get one. But Amp going to be able to get one as well. Brioche going to clean it up. Case is down there. They will have to get the diffuser, and Nar, the smoke, going to come in and take care of it. So. Yeah, a good round coming out there. INC able to clutch it up and go 3-3. I mean, if you want to believe in caster curses, ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, was Slay here that mentioned the 3 <laughs> for INC. So please, INC fans, go after Slayzilla on Twitter, not myself. But a great round there and a great pushback. We are going to have a little bit of a technical pause here coming out. One minute, 60 second technical pause. It'll give us a little bit more time to talk about that one. INC able to tie it up, go 3-3, three, three, but now, now's the hard part. Now they have to go on attack. Yeah, we'll see how that goes, man. It's been such an interesting story with that. I, I feel like really the opening rounds, the first half has always been pretty similar, but we'll see how it continues to go. Uh, for the last round, for round six, the SMG bros putting in work, man. Those SAS brothers are really, really great at being the last alive. Of course, you maybe not the best utility wise but that smg will shred of course smoke missing some of those canisters felt a little bad but still the smg man just tears through people there's no doubting that it's a terrifying weapon to go up against i mean as long as it doesn't run out of ammo which happens rather quickly but still great job from in control they strike back with three rounds in a row yeah and i think what happened was he was trying to smoke out maps right the little mm -hmm. table that's right there because the default spot has kind of fallen out of favor a lot of times yes you do have the vault table or the vault door to protect you but you really do get pinned in when that smoke canister comes flying in and so you're gonna flying in we're gonna be flying right back to avg but this time coastal will be the ones defending it and we're gonna see brioche bringing out the frost we have talked about it several times throughout genesis league this year Villa is one of the maps, along with a map like Chalet as well. Anything where there's windows that you have to hop through, bring a frost. Because it might not catch somebody, but it's got to it's gonna distract them, right? It's going to have to make mm -hmm. them look down at a window. So if you know that they're about to be hopping in, it's that split second. And we've seen split second is all you need to land your kill in Siege. Without a doubt, there's there's left. no underestimating the power of that little split second it takes to look down and, and even just checking for them. Because, I mean, if there's a threat of a frost, then you better know I'm going to be looking down every time I jump through a window. I don't want to be caught in a frost mat, and I don't think anybody really does. Now, here's something to look at. Unlimited struggling on map one and now struggling on map three. The map they won, map two, Unlimited really did a great job. He came out and performed. He started slow, but he was able to pick things up, and he's starting slow again here. Perhaps the true key to determining whether in control or coastal win is looking, is looking solely to Unlimited's performance. Can he pick it up here? That's the question, because right now, I think his team is doing a great job 
and they've really pushed back to Coastal. Both teams having three round streaks in a row. Yeah, speaking of pushes here, we have Gavin playing on these red stairs. He's going to choose to just kind of run back up as Amp and EJ were going to be there ready for a fight. And speaking of, EJ is going to be taking a bunch of damage right from those vertical holes. Yep, you can see right there those vertical holes. Now he's going to do some damage back to beam. Those holes do work both ways, ladies and gentlemen, as you see a grenade coming out trying to land a little bit of damage, but nothing does. Gonna have to sit here and watch as Brioche is holding the sneakiest of angles. Luckily, that was just a hologram. But Gavin gonna be able to take out EJ. A bunch of flashbangs are gonna come raining in. But CSG will be able to back it up. Amp, they're gonna take out Gavin. Gonna give himself a little bit of a health boost. That is the Arumi off the board. So nothing too spectacular, but a minute and a half gone here. And INC is really kind of a little bit behind the ball. Yeah, we'll see if they can get things going here. Tristan Amp still up. EJ dead, though, which is unfortunate for EJ. He's a he's a scary lad to go up against. But Tristan now beginning to move on. Unlimited will fall to scams as well. And mm, that's going to be a big, big, big problem as Beamed continues to put the pressure on. Now Amp dead. It's Nar and Tristan left alone with under a minute to go. The 2v4 does not look hopeful, but... We've seen crazy things happen before. It'll be up to these two players to get it. A great shot from Nar finds Beamed in the 3v2 with 45 seconds is on. Yeah, this is going to be incredibly tough now, especially as Brios is going to get Tristan engaged, going to put it off onto the kill with Nar. And <clears throat> man, and this is what I was talking about. These attacks on Villa can be so, so, so tough. If you, if you know the team, knows this map it can be very hard and obviously coastal has been playing very well all night long not just on this map so things are not going to be looking good for inc however again that's only their first attacking round right now we have to go over the trophy maybe this site's a little bit easier for them to attack but all i know is they have to keep it together they have to keep that pressure up that they had on the last end of their defending half because otherwise coastal might run away with this one quickly Oh, uh, yeah, Coastal is, again, they're really good at, at, at getting these momentums going, but I feel like in Control has, just on the other side of the coin, been really Attack good at stopping that and, and getting things going themselves. And where perhaps Coastal has struggled a little bit more is stopping in Control's own big, big pushes. Once in Control gets going, it, it's a difficult thing to tell them, hey, all right, all right, slow, slow down a little bit. You have to remember, back on map number one, we saw in control nation only take two rounds in a row at most. Coastal did a great job of making sure that they couldn't even get started, but it was on map number two of Clubhouse where in control really was able to string those big rounds together, and it seemed like Coastal was just unable to get a good stop. And if in control can get that started here, they could quickly allow it to snowball right in to their spot in the next playoff game. However, Coastal, though, have looked really, really good. That being said, this entire series has been so close, so, so back and forth. Yeah, I think whichever one of these teams makes it through here on this final map, because, again, unfortunately, we do have to have a winner and a loser. You can definitely say that they earned their spot here. This has been a hard-fought match back and forth through all three maps. And both of these teams just playing out of their mind, doing the absolute best they can. And Rios is going to be down here in this kitchen area and really trying to look for some kills using the Ronin with that 1.5. So he's got a little bit of extra zoom, but small magazines. However, he does have some backup as Scans and Gavin are there to play alongside of him. Pushing in the laundry beam, taking a little bit of damage. I'm not sure exactly what that would be from, as it was literally just the tiniest bit of damage. Maybe a flashbang doinked off of his head or something. But other than that, a minute gone here, and things looking really good for Coastal. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, we'll see if they can keep this defense on. I mean, doing a good job of making sure in control are wasting all of their precious time. No frags on either side, but it doesn't always you know, need to have a bunch of frags happen all at once. That time being drained can be just as effective. And oh my goodness, Unlimited, what a Ooh. shot was that? Beamed falls to the head as, oh my goodness. Gosh, that's the smoke off the board. But as you mentioned before, that's also beamed off the board. A phenomenal fragger, all thanks to Unlimited scoring his first kill of the map in a very timely fashion. Imagine your first kill of the entire match being that kill. That's a fantastic one. And 
you know, that'll, that'll get put onto the clip here as EJ going to be taking some damage here from the players sitting in Mudroom, but he gets getting swung by Engage. Engage going to be taking out EJ. Now he's going to work his way back up Astro Stairs. Brio is going to be taking out Unlimited. We're going to have a little bit of a fight here as Amp, the man with the plan, sitting here on top of the window. And Engage doesn't want anything to do with that. The Nitro are going to be coming out. It looks like that got shot off. You might see this Oyo ball going to get popped here as Tristan is going to be taken down. And Gavin going to be able to get one. He's going to be able to get another one. A fantastic play there. Swapping to the pistol. Engage with the knife kill on the swing. Coastal Gaming being one round closer to match point here. They're able to take their defense on trophy and fantastic one as we now move on to round nine. Round nine, five, three in favor of Coastal Gaming. They're doing so good and oh man, in control. Again, it just feels like they can't get started you mentioned you know the the really big thing here is having that momentum and in control they were able to get those three rounds in a row to tie things up and head into round or the second half excuse me at 3-3 but once again it's coastal running off in the first couple of rounds and as we go into round nine this could be match point if coastal aren't stopped here in control they need to be able to do something big and oh it just feels like they're maybe running out of i, I don't know I, I, it, it's either coastal is picking up the pace or in control is starting to slow down a little bit and you cannot afford that at all this is time to pick it up get that final night map hype and and just go as hard as you can and let's see if in control can ju do just that so a little bit of a fun fact here we like trends, right? We've been talking about history and trends and things. 3-3 three, three was the score on the first map that Coastal Gaming eventually went on to go win. However, on the last map, Coastal Gaming was up 5-3, and they lost 7-5. So, mm. <clears throat> INC was in this exact position exactly one map ago. So we know that they can do this. We know that they can come back and put on a show and rip together some rounds and... Now we're going to see EJ going on to the knock. We're also going to be seeing a pulse for the first time, an operator that we talked about a little bit earlier. Kind of falling out of favor a bit in the current meta, but we're going to see a very aggressive push here as we are already getting into the building. The F2 on the Twitch of Tristan looking to do some serious work. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting here. I, I think Pulse, if he's going to have any map to come out onto, it's got to be this map. Villa is very well known for its verticality, uh, both on the attacker and the defender side. Tristan might be in a little bit of an engagement here. <laughs> that drone instantly shot. Chuck's another one out there. Once to get things going on, that, oh man, it's going to be interesting to see what Coastal can do. But in control, you're right. They were in this position and they clawed their way out of it. Let's see if they can do it again. Because Coastal, they're looking real good. They're sitting real pretty, but can they actually cl close the door shut the lid on in control nation i'm not sure yet i'm not sold on that amp Attacker looks great tristan off. scary and some shots beginning to to ring out just over half the round left now as scams continues to try to peek and catch someone lacking yeah <clears throat> we're gonna see this push here you can see look at them they're all stacked up they're ready for refrags they're ready to swing here as limited gonna be checking in through this mudroom area into what people call zulu or z beam though gonna be getting one onto amped and that's huge that's the fink off the board that's the top frag off the board and frankly it's the most consistent player for inc off the board gavin gonna be getting one on the ej who has been kind of lackluster here and see tristan in the basement he's just chasing brioche but not really gonna be able to help out his team minute left and it's a 5v3 things are not looking good for inc no they're looking a little dismal there's no doubt about that but how oh, they've still got men on the board they've still got gunners and they've got uh, they've got a lot of hope <laughs> let's see if that's gonna be enough here is well 50 seconds continuing to tick down tristan looks a little bit stuck in time there and against the might of coastal i would be very upset at any lag happening there there's a nice shot from brios taking tristan down it's a 5v2 to put coastal in map point series point and that's all they need 30 seconds left nar and unlimited need to do it all to keep their team out of match point it's gonna come down to the two people the two least amount of frags and it doesn't matter as coastal getting a flawless round here to put themselves on the match point and go up six three 
definitely trying to push themselves one step closer for grand finals later this month. INC is just struggling to play. They cannot string anything together. They had a little bit of hope there at the end of the first split where they won three in a row here, but you just watched them lost three in a row. Now, again, first split, they lost three, won three. This, however, this is match point, and this is the point where we saw the flawless round come out from CSG, right? Now the team that has to play flawlessly is INC. There is no mulligan. There is no mess up. If they lose this round, they are done for the season. They will be packing up their bags Attackers and they will to have to wait. Although bomb. losing to the defending champion of Genesis League in the playoffs, not that bad of a thing to, to say, you know? <laughs> No, absolutely not, man. If in control, do fall here. I think they can be very proud about how they've performed. But, oh, man, I, I am still looking for this overtime that we have been just missing map after map. Will it ever happen? I don't know, because Coastal really has pushed it so far. Villa looks great for Coastal. There's no doubt about that. Looking at the score lines right now, looking at, at how yeah, everyone's playing, it just feels like Coastal has, has found their stride, man. Five they are insertion. absolutely doing everything they need to. And Attackers that's really and tough for ball. in control because they've got Amp who is going out there, top fragging the lobby, doing everything he can to push his team forward. Tristan just digging it. Everybody, EJ, Nar, Unlimited. But the question is, will that be enough to thwart the defending champions on well out of the three maps we've seen i'd have to say their best looking map of this series yeah and this has been a problem and speaking of a problem unlimited he's going to be one for scams he's going to take his head clean off that's going to be your jaeger off the board those ads's though probably already plays but you are losing that fantastic gun and scams currently sitting at four and six he wasn't doing the most damage but speed of damage unlimited he's going to do a little bit more on the gavin that's going to be a 2k for him in this round and that is a much bigger kill See a Rooney off the board and the person who is tied for your top fragger. Tristan going to be playing on the Ash. The first time we've seen this operator, I believe, all night, let alone just this match. And now that I didn't think actually happened, an Ash Droney, but now going to be swinging here onto the landing. Someone is sitting in AVG just waiting to try to hold that angle and get that pick. Oh, still under two minutes to go. A great opening from in control. This is what they need, man. I mean, we've seen that it can just take a break but there's brio shutting down ej as soon as i'm about to to praise in control nation for just killing it they instantly lose someone but they still have the man advantage they still have what they need put the pressure on coastal continue to push towards that site get it done but brios again says no 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 amp is out of here their top fragger now fallen to the top fragger of Coastal, and this is where things are going to be truly do or die. There is no room for a mistake at all. It'll be NAR, Unlimited, and Tristan doing everything they can to keep them and their team inside of the playoffs here in Genesis League. With under a minute to go, it'll all come down to this. It'll all come down to a 3v3 to figure out if we go on to another match or if one team moves on in the playoffs. Brioche engage and beam to going up against NAR Unlimited and Tristan with Attackers 45 seconds bomb. left here. It's going to be an Ash Habana and Sledge against the Thorn Ramai and Smoke. Three operators that are very good on both sides. Brioche, though, has that SMG 50 in hand. That gun hits like an absolute truck engage. Going to be able to take care of any projectiles that are coming through. But I do believe all the smoke canisters are gone for beamed. So that could be a problem here with a late push. No, Brioche going to get a 3K as he takes the head off of Tristan. 19 seconds left, and we are going to have to see a move coming out from INC. NAR going to be doing a lot of damage to Brioche, though. He's going to have to back out. 10 seconds left. Unlimited going to be swinging into left. sight. Not going to be able to find one. He does a lot of damage to engage, though. A quad kill coming out from Brioche. Is he going to be able to finish it off and get the ace? Unlimited going to be taken out Engage One second left. Not going to be enough time. Operator Defenders win and that is coastal gaming ladies and gentlemen taking it seven to three a fantastic performance coming out there for them and absolutely dominant on map number three of villa so crowd predicted it correctly coastal gaming the three seed upsetting the two seed in a best of three match slay that was just fantastic to watch that really was, man. What a roller coaster. Great, great job from both teams.
in control really went out there and played hard man i mean both of these teams deserve to be in the playoffs and like you said it's unfortunate that only one can move on but if any team would have moved on after these games it it's got to be coastal they fought they dug they did exactly what they needed to do and beating them 7-3 in that final map that's a very nice way to put a cherry on top great job to in control great job to coastal what a phenomenal series we've seen yeah, like you said, it, it was a best of three, and this is where Siege is at its best, right? Best of threes are definitely the most fun, only topped, of course, by best of fives, right? But uh, speaking of the best, ladies and gentlemen, we have the best analysts in the biz who are going to be doing an interview here with us. So, Blaze, Santos, let's wrap it up for the evening and get to the interview with Coastal Gaming, the winners, 2-1 tonight. That was a matchup. That was 100% a matchup. That was so much fun to watch. And we do have a special guest in our voice chat right now. Scams, congratulations on the first quarterfinals win. Thank you. So, Santos and I have some questions for you. So let's, let's go ahead and, right. you know, start off. That blitz, that blitz, that, that blitz. <laughs> At first it started off yeah. as a joke. Then it turned into the real thing. What was the whole thought process behind that? No, nah, so I watched I watched the like I watched the CL game. So it was um I think it was like a uh, game in Gladiators versus uh, took the kids and they tried to do a blitz rush like that, but they didn't have like a second element. Like they didn't have a guy ninety or like anything else about the push. So I like I took that idea and just add my, added my own little twist to it, and uh, it worked out really well because they were caught off guard. For sure. Dang, like I'm honestly like Santos is probably gonna roll his eyes because he knows I'm all about the shield meta. <laughs> because I know it's gonna happen with this attacker refect. But no, like that was brilliant. Honestly, like I've seen some very, very illy played blitz uh strats, and that was very, very well played. So congratulations on that. I don't know, Santos, what you got for him? One question for you, Scams. And uh it's gonna it's gonna talk about that last map. What the hell got into y'all? Like, that was just a dominant showing from y'all. I mean, you dropped some rounds in, like, the sort of midpoint of that map. But y'all really dominated that. What got into y'all? Like, what was what were the vibes like in there? That was insane. Um, We were a lot more casual about things. Like, the first two maps were definitely really uptight, really trying to play the structured, like, um, play structured and play to how we're, like, supposed to, like, play together. And then the last map, we kind of... um. Not necessarily, we didn't let things slip, but we kind of started to enjoy the game a bit more. We started to just enjoy being around each other and just kind of made things work. Like, everybody's obviously still trying, but everybody was enjoying playing with each other a bit more. Yeah, I absolutely love hearing that because chemistry, mentality, like the psychological things, those are extremely important in the world of Siege. Now, my last question before I throw it back over to Santos is... When it comes to, I will say, Gavin specifically, because I noticed he was always in a very interesting spot at the right time. So he's, like, honestly amazing at flanks. How do you guys actually communicate, or do you just kind of let him do his own thing? So a lot of the time when we have, like, if Gavin pulls off a flank, it's one of those things where we get Gavin into a position. It's not specifically Gavin, honestly. Mm -hmm. It kind of just happened to be him because he's just a very, like, like very like gunfight oriented player like he loves to be in the engagements honestly mm -hmm. so when he's like going to going for a flank or he sees something he calls it and then we just are supposed to surround him basically like we play around him we hold his angles he calls what he's holding and we can hold his crossfires if he dies like we play for a trade it's he always gets himself to into a good spot through like I know one round he tried to he like drop study hash to flank somebody below and that wouldn't be possible if like our main guys weren't like consistently shooting at study to cover his sound and like he, he's just very good at uh, seeing the gaps in my opinion. Well, scams, I got one more question for you and this is probably the easiest one of the night. I mean, just floor is all yours. Do you want to do you have anyone to shout out just uh, anyone to show some love to before we, uh, you know, let you get out on here? Want to shout out K2 Vermeulen for being my inspiration, and also the thank you, thank you to Coastal the Org. Um, I haven't been a